Welcome to Beyond Bite Wings, the business side of dentistry, brought to you by Edwards & Associates PC. Join us as we discuss how to build your dental practice, optimize your income, and plan for your future. This podcast is distributed with the understanding that Edwards & Associates PC is not rendering legal, accounting, or professional advice. Listeners should consult with their business advisors before acting on any of the information that is shared. At Edwards & Associates PC, our business is the business of dentistry. For help or more information, visit our website at enassociates.com. Hello and welcome to another episode of Beyond Bite Wings. In today's episode, we will be talking with Monica Holder, who is with Surety Billing and has been with them for over three years now. Um, They basically help dental clients and other medical professionals with their dental billings and medical billings. And within the studio, of course, we also have Robert with us. I'm here again. Hi, Robert. And hey, Monica, how are you today? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Thank you. And thank you so much for being here with us today. So tell us a little bit about Charity Billing. Okay, so Charity Billing um, is a company that we started, um, a couple of doctors and myself uh, started as we saw a need for Mm -hmm. medical insurance billing in the dental practices. We were doing it in our own practices and um, had gotten pretty successful at it. And some of our sales reps and you know, people that were in and out of our practice knew that we were that we were doing that. Started spreading the word and giving our names to other dentists in the you know across the state and having them call us to give them some advice or help them figure out how to do it in you know in their own practices. And several of those, I would I guess I would say not really successful at it. I see. Um, they were getting denials, even though you know we had given them kind of the tips you know, that we used. And so one of, one of them actually said, you know, would you be interested in doing this for us? And my doctor said, you're already spending too much time <laughs> doing that, and not doing our work. So we either need to, we're either going to have to cut that out or maybe we can start a company that does that. So we talked about it and researched it and found it, found out that there really was a need for that. So we started Surety Dental initially to do medical insurance billing for dental practices. And medical insurance billing is one thing. Dental insurance billing is something else. And medical insurance billing for dental practices is kind of a unicorn. It's a totally different animal. And it takes special skill set and mindset to be able to push through and get that done. And we have just ended up with a great team of girls that have figured it out and have been very successful at doing that. And so we were working with several practices doing that. And one of them said, oh, you're doing such a good job at this. How about taking on my dental insurance billing? Would you be willing to do that? So we hired additional employee to take on, you know, that task and that has grown. So now we have a team that does, you know, just dental insurance billing and another team that does medical insurance billing. All for dental practices. I see. And we've been doing that since 2018. Hey, Monica, why are there so many dentists out there resistant to uh, doing medical billing through their practices? For some reason, they think it's either uh, too much trouble or it's wrong or there's something wrong with the concept. How do you address that? Right. Um, so those are the two main issues, Robert. One is that they've either tried it and they weren't successful at it. And most of the, if you try it in your own practice, you're going to get denied the first few times. Well, to some people that's frustrating and they just think it's impossible and they throw their hands up and quit. And that a unique thing about the girls that we have is they're not quitters and they don't take no for an answer very well. So they just dig in and figure out the way to do it, to get it taken care of and get it paid. You know, and initially that took a whole lot of appeals and phone calls and correspondence back and forth with, you know, the insurance companies. And you know, one thing is with dental insurance billing, we don't have to use diagnosis coding and you do with medical billing. So a lot of it we found out is in how you code the procedures and the diagnosis codes and the, you know, the doctors just have to be very thorough and 
the notes that they write so that we can um, get the right coding. And once we do that, then we get it paid. And I think that's where some of the frustration comes in with, you know, the dental insurance billing. People in the in the dental their insurance coordinators in their dental offices try to attempt to do it, and they don't know anything about the diagnosis coding. So they just they put down what they think you know might be the right answer, and most of the time it's not. So it gets denied, and um, and they get frustrated. And it really takes someone. It's kind of a full time job, and takes someone that that's all they're devoted to is doing medical billing. That it you can't just send out a claim or two here or there and expect to be successful at it. And so the doctors get really frustrated with that. And then some of them even think, kind of feel like it's on the verge of being illegal, maybe. Um, or, or, or maybe uh, o- overly aggressive. May, yes, maybe so. Is it correct to mm-hmm. say that the but, reimbursement rates are, are higher for some of the medical billing than it is for the dental procedures? They are. But the reason for that, or the reason... One thing is, at one time, you could not build dental procedures to medical insurance, and which has always been kind of odd to me because it's kind of like they're saying the mouth, your mouth is not part of your body. And there are so many things with that they have discovered in more recent years that like sleep apnea, TMJ, those things affect your overall body. They don't just affect your ability to chew or eat or not just your teeth they do affect your overall body and that's why the um medical insurance companies have come on board and said you know what it does affect your overall body so they have started paying for those services well, i think it's even and proven now that, that through a lot of the reports that i've read from some of the medical schools that even heart disease is as a result of uh, your oral oral health right overall oral health heart disease diabetes There are many things that it can affect. And so, like I said, it's just in the last few years, I think we started billing and maybe in 2014 and the practices that I started in as an office manager. And it was around that time that the awareness was there. These studies started coming out and the insurance companies started paying for these medical procedures or dental procedures. Okay. And and why... Are, what are some of the things that a dentist should take into account in considering whether or not to use an outside billing company? If you had asked me a couple of years ago for outside for outsourcing um, billing, I would have told you the main reason is so that the doctors and the team members could devote more of their time to direct patient care, which is still very important and still probably number one, but a very close second at this this day and time is we all know how hard it is to find not just quality employees but or any any employee. any employee <laughs> you know any employee exactly so it helps outsourcing eliminates the frustration of having to hire and also the training and managing of those employees so it becomes more cost effective to outsource that so you don't have the expenses that go along with hiring, training, managing, payroll expenses, um, payroll taxes. And in return, you also also save money because you know, billing companies typically are comprised of specialists, and that's all they do all day long is insurance. So most of the time, they're able to get claims paid a little faster. They have a lower rate of denial and can and eliminate those timely filing issues that a lot of offices run into when they have claims that are that aren't paid immediately and front office staff a lot of times are so busy checking patients in checking patients out doing new patient paperwork they have so many other tasks that the following up on unpaid insurance claims seems to get shoved to the back burner and and then a lot of times they don't get it. They don't, by the time they follow up on it, they run into some timely filing, and then the doctors are losing a lot of money because they're not getting getting paid on those claims. So, and that's one thing you alluded to is, is you know the the accounts receivable really ballooning up out of control because there's no follow up. And I think that's something else that Surety offers, isn't it? Is cleaning up a, a, a client's accounts receivable? Absolutely, and we can we can do a consult. And right now we're kind of offering those free. If anyone, you know, wants to take advantage of that, we can just run a, have you run a couple of reports 
and send them to us and we can let you know exactly how we can help some in some situations it most of the time it's because of the lack of staff and the hours that they have to devote it's not anything that anyone's intentionally doing wrong they just don't have enough time in the day to manage it all well i think and that's a bigger so problem could, these days than it has been in the past because we we're all having trouble finding staff people and all the practices are the same way right that's right it, that's it you have the nail on the head that um they just don't have time and so we can run a report or have a couple of reports run and sent to us and can tell you or tell the doctors in a matter of minutes you know some of their what it looks like their key problems are and in some a lot of situations you know they just need a little help getting caught up they don't really you know they have enough staff to hand to manage it but for some reason they've gotten behind and we can go in and do a like you said a cleanup service where we spend a couple of months just depending on how large the problem is or the size of the practice usually between three and six months and get it cleaned up and get the entrance billing back to in a healthy area. And then we can turn it back over to them. Well, and without, the without getting into any specifics, I know you've done some work for a couple of our clients and with the one in Seattle, why don't you sort of describe what his situation was like and what you were, were able to accomplish for him when you went in and, and how bad it was. You can use numbers, don't use names. Okay. So just standard rule of thumb in a single doctor practice, um, we don't want to see the like insurance. We really don't want to see insurance over 90 days at all. Anything outstanding over 90 days, we definitely want to keep it under under about three thousand dollars in a single doctor practice. There, there's just about always going to be you know one or two things that you've had to appeal or you know just for whatever reason there's some things that linger out out there in that in the 90 day column, but just like I said, to give you a rule of thumb, 3000 is kind of our maximum. And when we went in to, we actually had a couple of your clients <laughs> that, we, uh, that we've gone into that have been, and that one, I want to say his, that one, when we first ran the report, was like 168000 and that And that's just the, over, over 90 days, right? That was just over 90 day insurance. And he had absolutely no idea. And that's what we find most of the time. The doctors really, a lot of times they're not running any reports or looking at any end of the day to sit, to make sure, you know, the insurance is filed, the money's going into the bank properly, the payments are getting posted like they should. So what we find out is, you know, when we get into it, you know, sometimes, most of the time, it's not that the whole amount of money that's just outstanding in insurance. Sometimes they're not posting payments correctly and it's not getting closed out in the software. So, you know, sometimes it's just things need to be closed and they've been paid. It's just the, they left the claims open. But a lot of times what I guess the main thing that we see is that they aren't following up on the, on the claims. Once they file them, they don't have the time to go back and do the follow up. So what happens at that point is the claims go into um a timely filing status. The insurance companies only allow it went when I first started, most of them allowed a year. Well now we've seen it back up to six months for the majority and even three months on some. That if you don't have it filed within three months, then and if you have a problem, don't have it a you know, the appeals taken care of, then they're not gonna pay you. They're looking insurance companies look for every reason they can not to pay. So, Imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> so we go in and we find we find those problems and we get those claims. You know, that's our main focus when we first start is to catch anything that might be um, nearing a timely filing date and get those taken care of so the doctor doesn't lose that money and then kind of work backwards to get things cleaned up. And once we get that 90, 90 day load, like $3,000, the doctors can either opt to stay with us so they're filing their claims or they can, you know, turn it back over to their staff. And when you come in to do the work for a client, do you train the front desk person or, or, or is the client tied to you forever? We do go over that with the doctors and show them what, you know, how they can follow up in the, in the future. And especially if, 
you know, they decide to take it back on once we've done the cleanup service, we want them to know how to monitor that and see, you know, before it becomes a problem in the future. So most of the clients that we work with in that capacity that do take it back on themselves just about always end up calling us back at some point and saying, look, can you look, can you review this report for me and make sure I feel like things are maybe getting off control again. We've had some that have signed back on and just said, why don't you just file our claims and we're going to, I'm going to let my team focus on patient care and let you handle the, handle all of the billing. Because when we do that, we do the billing, file all the claims, post all the payments, handle any appeals. Most of the time we don't have, we cut down on the number of denials just because our team is so specialized and they know everything that needs to be sent with a claim to keep from having a denial. Okay, and I think think Ash has a question for you here. Let him jump in for just a second. Go ahead, Ash. No, I mean, I was just listening, honestly, that surety billing can really be so helpful towards our uh, dental clientele. One thing, though, that I was wondering, you know, just Placing myself in their shoes is that for someone who's really been relying on their front desk people to handle a lot of this work and is seriously considering maybe moving to an outsourced billing services such as surety billing, if I'm thinking about the implementation part of it, how long does it usually take to implement something like this? And are there other things that I need to consider? Maybe download certain software, maybe upgrade my computer so it can handle a software like that. What does the whole implementation process look like if I'm considering using an outsourced billing service company? That's a great question, Ash. Yeah. We um, <laughs> That's why I have so him here. It depends, on, <laughs> <laughs> that it depends on, there are several things. It depends, but mainly what software, dental software they use. Mm-hmm. Some of them, a lot of them now are using cloud-based softwares. And if they have a cloud-based software, we're able to just log into their system over the internet. If they don't have a cloud-based software, such as EagleSoft or Dentrix, which a lot of a lot of our clients have, mm-hmm. we set up a remote desktop system. And it's not actually remote desktop. There's an, another software that we use. It doesn't take any time for them to download it on their side. We give them all the instructions and make that super easy for them we can start in a matter of days. It doesn't take, oh, wow. you know, weeks or months to get going. We, and I think typically when they come to us, it's kind of, a lot of times it's an emergency, you know, to get in and get started as quickly as possible. And, and we're able to do that. We're able to start, like I said, typically within, you know, a couple of days, we can have everything set up. But at most, it's one software that we download they have to download on their side so we can go in and access their system. And we just, we log into their system. We do need a computer that is set up somewhere in a, you know, back office or something that is strictly for our use. And so we're not kicking people off. They're not kicking, booting us off throughout the day. And we have, we have had some that, you know, we set up to use, you know, one that someone else uses in the morning and we can use it in the afternoon. We we try to be flexible when at all possible where they don't, you know, don't have to go out and buy a computer just for us. But it's better if we can have one designated for us so we can log in and out. And Monica, how much of your but, work is remote and, and how much of it is actually on site? Um, it, it's all remote. Everything is remote. Wow, that's amazing. And that's probably why you guys can accomplish what you guys do within as little as 48 hours. Exactly. And um, as far as the, you asked about on-site, I know Mm -hmm. with a couple of your clients, Robert, we have gone to their practice to work with their teams. That that is an additional service that we offer. We do offer some consulting services, you know, to go out and help train team members to do any type of office management. We do some team building also, it's just involved, evolved into total dental office management. So basically like an a la carte system. If the client needs something on top of what you guys are already offering in your base package, it can be done. This for, it can be done. This exactly. for some additional fees. Okay, so that's great. So it's actually pretty amazing, you know, during COVID or before COVID, you know, whether there's already this team available in the front desk department to do all this work. That if if a company like Surety Billing steps in, 
a huge chunk of their responsibilities can be alleviated where they can focus more on maybe relationship dentistry. Or, you know, if you're operating a practice where you're finding it hard to find front desk people right now with the current situation, even then it's helpful to maybe consider uh, an outsourced uh, dental billing service company like Charity Billing. So, you know, that is pretty great, honestly, what you guys are doing. And I think right now this market is the perfect time for you guys to grow. And that's that's amazing. And honestly, you know, this was something that a lot of our clients were asking us. And that was part of the reason why we wanted to have you guys on the episode. One thing, though, that they have always asked me, considering whether to use an outside dental billing services versus continuing to use, you know, their front desk people that they already have, is the price factor. So if you are okay or comfortable sharing your fee structure maybe with our listeners, I think that'll go a long way. So the I'm not in the office right now. Um, okay, I've that's stepped fine. out to be able to do this, so I don't have a brochure right in front of me. So mm-hmm. I'm not going to give you, I can't give you exact numbers, but I can give you close. Up to We do it based on um, their monthly collections. So it's geared to each one individually. We do have a minimum of twelve fifty per month. Mm-hmm. But and I think that's for anyone that the, the collections are a hundred thousand or less per month. Mm-hmm. And then after that it's like the first level is one point two five percent of whatever their monthly collections are. We bill on the on the back end so they get a month of work out of us without having to pay. Mm-hmm. You know, until we they don't pay pay for our services until we complete them. So, and this is on the dental billing. And and then after a certain um, dollar amount of collection, it, the percentage goes down. So we really, um, and Robert has kind of helped us fine tune this. We were, you know, in the beginning, we kind of played around with it a lot. We want, we've got to make money to be able to pay our employees, of course, but we want to make it as fair as possible for the dentist as well and so far everyone that we've worked with is even if they're a little skittish in the beginning because that is a huge concern always they end up seeing the value right and feel like it's a fair a fair fair value and it's like i said less than what they could pay an employee correct and in today's market you know with the raised salaries it seems like you know even with your fees even with the additional service fees i feel like it's still going to be much cheaper than hiring uh, a front desk person who would be doing this full-time that's right and and monica if people wanted to get in touch with you why don't you uh, tell them how to do that okay so you can call our um office at 662-402-4021 and Anyone there should be able to help you. And if you're interested in whether it be medical or dental, they can get you to the right person. And we would love to love to hear from you guys. Awesome. Super. Thanks for being with us today. And Ash, if people want to get in touch with us for more information, how would they do that? Yeah. So you guys uh, can email us at info at eandassociates.com. And that and is spelled out. And, uh, you know, feel free to get in touch with us, you know, regarding questions or feedback, or if there are some additional topics that you guys would like us to do our episodes on. Uh, We always look forward to hearing your questions and love to hear from you guys. So until next time, take care. Thanks for listening today. Be sure to subscribe to Beyond Bite Wings on your favorite podcast platform. For more info, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, or reach out to us on our website. You can also shoot us an email at info at eandassociates.com.